As I mentioned earlier, this little Acer runs a stripped down version of Linux called Linpus Linux Lite, and it contains all of the essentials for running basic applications and the web, but little beyond that. Now, Linux has this little management console here that we work from. All of the functions are broken down into four main areas. Now, we'll look at the connect area in a few moments. That's basically all of our web applications. We're going to start with the work area, which is all of our productivity tools. And the work area contains the Open Office suite of tools. Now, the Open Office suite of tools is a free version of a productivity suite, which is pretty much identical to Microsoft Office. But instead of Word, we have Writer. Instead of Excel, we have Spreadsheets. Instead of PowerPoint, it's called Presentations. There's also a Calendar, Contact, Calculator, and a Notes area. So this works pretty much identical to the way that you'd use Microsoft Office. In fact, if I go and I open up a word processing document that I have in Writer, we see the familiar pull-down menus, and they're all structured pretty much the same as they are in Microsoft Word. And if I go into the File menu and choose to save this as, I can even save it as a Microsoft Word document. Now, this is really important if you're exchanging files with a colleague that you want to be able to open and edit the same file, or if you're working on it on your little Aspire notebook, and then you want to send it to your desktop computer where you have Office running, you have the ability to work in native file format. And this works for all of the applications. This works for Word. This works for the uh, spreadsheet application. This also works for the presentation tool. So you can seamlessly go back and forth from your Aspire notebook to a Windows or a Macintosh computer for that matter. Now, let's go into the entertainment area, which deals a little bit differently. In the fun area, we've got a media player, we've got a photo manager of games, we've got the tool that we use for managing our webcam, and there's also a simple little paint utility. Now, I'm not sure that you'll use this notebook quite as much for entertainment. I don't think, for example, that you're going to download all of your music onto this computer and use it as an MP3 player. Typically speaking, with only 8 gigabytes of memory, you won't want to do that. But the fact that we have these expansion ports here that allow us to take memory cards from digital cameras and plug them in means the photo manager is probably quite a useful addition because you can at least view and manage your photographs a little bit here in this manager. So it's a simple photo manager. We're not going to do photo editing on it. We're going to use it for viewing them, for preparing them, possibly for emailing them. It will allow us to deal with photos that way. The next thing I want to show you is I want to show you the file manager. Now, this is the management system that allows us to organize our files. Because we're dealing in a console, we don't really have direct access the way that we do, say, in Windows or the Mac OS to all of our different file structure. But if I go here into my documents area, for the first time, we see a sort of a Windows environment where we can actually go in and manage documents. Now, the important thing to note here is the amount of storage space that we have available. This is where it tells us how much disk space we have. Now, on this particular notebook, and I haven't loaded very many files onto it, just the basic applications at this point, I have 3.7 gigabytes free. Now, if you're trying to do the math and trying to figure out if you can move all of your Word and all of your uh, spreadsheet documents onto this computer, what you should do is just go into your My Documents folder on your computer and then take a look at, all of, uh, at the size of all of your documents together. But make sure that you don't count your music and your photos and your videos. They take up a lot of space. I think you'll probably find that all of your word processing and all of your spreadsheet documents will comfortably fit in less than 3.7 gigabytes. So you can move them all over and work with them all on this notebook if you choose. I'm really intrigued with this type of computer. Last night, I used it to write my newspaper column. And I got to admit, I did find the keyboard to be a bit tight for my hands. So if you have big hands, you're probably going to find it difficult to use. But the screen itself was super clear. The fact it was 1024 pixels wide allowed me to write very comfortably. It was bright and easy on the eyes. It's going to be interesting to see when I take this on the road whether I miss the power of a full-fledged notebook and how much difference a few extra pounds makes. This computer does a lot. It's small, portable, affordable, and it ships with built-in applications and operating system. But it really needs the internet to reach its full potential. I want to show you how you can add life to this little guy by including the internet. Let me show you what I mean. Last year, we looked at web services called Google Docs. And I'm going to take you back there and show you an amazing synergy between this portable computer and the web. So we're going to go into the connect area, which allows us to connect to our network. Now, I've got the Wi-Fi network running here in the studio. And it was very easy to connect this computer to the network. In fact, it was very intelligent as far as its connection tools went. You'll find it really easy to connect to any Wi-Fi network. So here are our internet tools. We've got a web browser, messenger, email, Skype for making phone calls 
and a variety of other web-based tools. Now, I'm going to launch the web browser, and I, it's actually my favorite web browser. It's Firefox, and I've set it up with several tabs open that I think the average person might want to use as, a, as far as their internet access goes. So I've got my Gmail account open. I have Facebook open. I also have my Google Docs area open, which is really the star of this part of the show. And I've got my AirSet calendar, which is basically the calendar that we use for managing all of our business calendar activities. But I'm going to take you into Google Docs here because I think that's really interesting. Google Docs are a series of tools that Google provides that allows us to create online versions of our documents. But not only do we have online versions of our documents, but we also have an online tool based in a web browser that allows us to do word processing, to do spreadsheets, or to do presentations. So this really is a whole new metaphor for personal computing. So instead of the document and the application living on our computer, both document and application live on the web, live at Google. And instead of accessing our hard drive for the applications and for all of our files, we, through a web browser, access the Google servers so that our, all of our stuff is then virtual. But it's also all stored on the internet, which means we can access it from any computer in any operating system. So you can start by writing a document or a word processor. Let me open up a little spreadsheet here. You can start by writing that spreadsheet or writing that word processor on your little sub notebook online and then you can access it later on your Macintosh or on your PC from a different computer anywhere as long as it has internet access. And this is a wonderful tool for also doing collaborative computing because you can share your documents with others. So imagine a student working on a word processing document. They start with their little Aspire 1 in class and they write a little document up and maybe they're working on a collaborative project. They share that document with somebody else who's working on a PC and they again access it through their web browser and edit it. The kid, when he gets back to his dorm, might have a Mac at his dorm. He then accesses the document again just through his web browser and is able to make the final edits before they actually publish their document. It's a whole new way of looking at using this technology. And as you can see, this little computer fits right at the heart of that metaphor. I love the idea of students using this computer, taking notes in class, being connected to the school's Wi-Fi network. It's light, it's capable, and as we've said, very affordable. I think we've got a winner here, and we're seeing a lot of manufacturers putting their spin on this style of computer. I can promise you one thing, though. This isn't the last time we're going to be looking at this type of PC this season. It will be well worth returning to this story in the not-too-distant future.